Hello YouTube, this is Sam from Tiger Schooling and today we are going to discuss on an important topic that is pleura and in this topic we'll be going to cover about the pleura, pleural cavity, the boundaries of the pleura and why it is important to uh, to have a pleura here, what pleura contains and what the pleural and the pleural fluid what is in the plural fluid and why is it important we'll be covering all these important things also let's get started with our definition of plura so plura is kind of a serous membrane a, a serous membrane is a membrane which is a secretory me secretory membrane and uh, it uh, and it allows frictionless movement so pleura is a serous membrane actually lining the thorax which i haven't shown here which actually line the thorax from the outside, which is the parietal pleura, uh, pleura, which actually aligns the thorax and an other layer, that is the visceral pleura that actually surrounds the lungs. It's actually attached, kindly attached to the lungs. I will uh, show that picture in another diagram and I will explain the visceral and parietal pleura in a clear picture. Let's discuss from though. So uh, how pleura is, how pleural cavity is formed, it's actually formed in this manner. If you see uh, the pleura, it's actually a one layer. There are no two layers, but uh, let me let me demonst demonstrate it. Consider this, this, this paper as a one layer, but as it folds down, as it folds down, for example, it folds from this side, and this is the thing, it becomes into two layers. The above layer, for example, consider this my hand, is thorax. This is thor thorax and below it on the other side and the covering the other side of the paper, it's, uh, it's the lungs below. So thorax, below thorax, we have got the uh, parietal pleura and below and over here we have got lungs and it is covered by the visceral pleura and in between this, this is space. This is space is called pleural cavity. So this is actually one layer, but it is folded. Uh, it can be best demonstrated uh, by a balloon, but I don't have a balloon, so I can't explain it uh, with that way, but this is, is something similar to that one. And the area where, where both plura, uh, plura are continuous, uh, this, this, uh, this, uh, this area is called the pulmonary ligament. Uh, the, at the, at the point of pulmonary, you can say that at the point of pulmonary ligament, both the pleura, that is visceral and parietal pleura, become continuous. So uh, the visceral and pl uh, parietal pleura, we have uh, we have just understood what is visceral pleura and what is uh, pl parietal pl pleura. So and now let's talk about the pleural cavity. So pleural cavity has a, a fluid. It contains the sodium chloride, but mostly it contains protein, especially albumin. Because albumin is a protein which helps in in in, uh, in reducing the friction. Because because it it uh, we if we don't have the um, the albumin, we would have a lot of friction and which could damage the heart, lungs. So we have a protein albumin which help, helps in uh, frictionless movement and we have uh, glucose as well and other, other uh, ions present here. And this, uh, plural, this uh, fluid is also uh, clear because it's clear and uh, it's transparent. Oh, let's consider another diagram in which uh, we will go from skin to the inside of the lungs and see the different layers which cover the uh, the area from outside going to the uh, going inside towards lungs. So this is outside, and we are going from outside to inside. So let's consider this picture, this this lining. The outermost lining is the skin. This is skin. As we go inward, we have superficial fascia. A skin. We have got superficial fascia. After the superficial fascia, we have got serratus. Uh, anterior, anterior, is anterior. It's actually a muscle. I will, I will show the picture. You can see this picture. This is actually uh, the serratus anterior. And as we go inward, we got external intercostal. We have got three intercostal muscles. That is external intercostal, uh, inter, uh, internal intercostal. Here we got internal inter intercostal. This one is internal intercostals, and we have got innermost intercostal, which is this one. 
We've got skin, superficial face, superficial fascia, serratus, uh, serratus anterior. We've got uh, external intercostal, internal intercostal muscle, and we've got innermost intercostal muscles. As we go inward from the innermost intercostal muscle, we have a, a, we have a, a, another fascia that is a, that is a that is between the innermost intercostal and the parietal pleura and this is called endothoracic fascia remember that between innermost intercostal mus mus uh, muscle and the parietal pleura we have got endothoracic fascia as we cross the endothoracic fascia we have got parietal pleura and after the parietal pleura we are going inside remember that we are going inside continuously in between, this is after we're crossing the parietal pleura, we have got pleural cavity. This is the pleural cavity, which is filled by the pleural fluid, uh, which is rich in uh, albumin protein. And as we go inside, uh, after crossing the pleural cavity, we have got visceral cavity, which is actually covering the lung. So remember that. In between parietal, parietal is the outermost, which is covering the thorax, which is actually covering the thorax is the... Uh, Parietal and uh, the as we, uh, and the innermost, which is visceral pleura, is actually covering the lungs. Now let's move further on and discuss the division, or you can say boundaries of the parietal pleura. And here we go with another diagram that explains it better way. In better way, we actually divide the parietal pleura on the basis of its boundaries, or we shall. Or, be more specific that uh, the area which it covers for example if it's covering the cervical region we will call it the cervical pleura or the diaphragmatic region if the pleura is covering the diaphragmatic region we will call it the uh, diaphragmatic pleura but uh, let's be let's start with this one we have got four main divisions of the uh, parietal pleura because we're not going to talk about the survey uh, uh, the visceral pleura because visceral pleura is actually covering the lung so we have actually divided the parietal pleura. So parietal pleura is divided into four parts. That is actually uh, on the basis of the area which is covering. We have got cervical pleura. And the cervical pleura, it, it, it actually extends much more, much higher over there. I haven't clearly drawn it. And uh, we have got cervical pleura. We have got coastal pleura, which is actually covering the coastal area. Uh, the coastal side of the uh, lungs and as we go downward we have got this is number one this is number two and we have got on the on the innermost side we have got mediastinal pleura which actually covers the uh, mediastinal we have already discussed the mediastinal pleura if you haven't seen that we will I will link it down below about the mediastinal pleura and number four is diaphragmatic Pleura, which actually covers the diaphragm. But if you see the parietal pleura uh, from uh, in 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 a, in a cadaver, you will see it as a shiny. It, it, it actually shines, so it, you can clearly identify the pleura. Now let's discuss the two main terms that we have to cover up. That is costal diaphragmatic rests and the costal mediastinal rests. So the word rests actually means it's a space. It's a, it's a small space, not a big space. And um, the costal diaphragmatic rests, this is about uh, uh, approximately five centimeter vertically downward. Uh, I mean, the parietal uh, pleura extends downward and leaving uh, a big space over here, which actually helps. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this, uh, this area is called the costal di uh, diaphragmatic process, which actually helps the lung while in uh, inspiration for in in in, um, uh, in taking the heavy breathing for example if somebody is breathing more not normal breathing but actually breathing heavy so the lungs expand much more and this the lung would cover up this area and it actually doesn't cover the whole area because the lung is going to push downward but it won't be covering the whole area but it still there would be a little bit free space uh, in the in that region but this thing is extended and uh, much more uh, downward because of this reason uh, when we take a deep breath so it's a potential space we can say that that is located between the costal and diaphragmatic pleura uh, pleura that's we that's why we call it the costal diaphragmatic rasis 
Another term we are going to discuss is the costal mediastinal rashes. Again, the word rashes, uh, I, I haven't shown it in this picture because this picture wouldn't uh, describe, it, uh, describe it as clear, but uh, I, have, I want you to just imagine it or just, uh, just look at the picture above there so you would understand the co costal mediastinal rashes. It's actually also a space, small space, uh, at the border between mediastinal pleura and the costal pleura. Again, the word media is uh, costal, media is tal, resis. Resis means space, costal means costal, and uh, media is tal means media is tal. It's uh, between costal, um, costal plura, and the media is tal plura, then there is a space, which is called the costal media is tal space. And it actually, it also assists in, uh, in inspiration while we uh, breathe deeply. So this is everything regarding the pleura, pleural cavity, and uh, the related uh, things we have discussed. So for more, please keep visiting Tiger's Cooling, and don't forget to comment if you want to learn anything new.